Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calmlands. Like that. This field here, I believe we will only need to do one planting of oilseed radish, the same as the canola field down the bottom because the corn like well the cor when the corn is harvested it leaves behind all the residue in the field and we have a mod that changes that into a layer of fertilizer um i don't i, I think it's chopped straw mod i think that's what it's called it's chopped straw so if you have your barley instead if you instead of baling it or oats instead of baling the straw for quick cash um if you leave it then you get an extra layer of fertilizer in the field which I think should be something that's done into the base game rather than having to be a mod because if you take the straw off the field with the barley or the oats you can sell it and you can make some money so it stands to reason that leaving it in the field so that it can be incorporated back into the ground and give extra organic matter and, and so on and it rots down is fertilizer it stands to reason that we should be able to make a bit of money out of that or at least save ourselves some work because by having it as an extra layer of fertilizer it means that we don't have to worry about paying for the wages to work the land we don't have to buy the fertilizer or you know get the manure or the slurry up here we don't have to do any of those things right we have got plenty of room for turning round I'm going to turn him round this way and I'm going to manually do one more pass and I'm going to let the hired help take over. So I will go like that. Race up through there. And then I will reverse up this way a bit. Uh, There-ish. What do we reckon? Is that, is that pretty good? Okay, nope. I didn't mean to accidentally start folding it. I meant to do that. And lower that one down. There you go. Right, we'll tidy everything up that that one does a bit later on. So now I can go and have a look in here. And uh, prices, that's what we were looking at. So we want to see the sugar beet at the moment. That one highest price is January. So we're approaching the high price for sugar beet. Potatoes. Corn. According to this, the high price of corn is June which I genuinely didn't expect. Soybeans is June. Soybeans, the best price for soybeans is June. This one here is February, uh, January, December. Yeah, all, all of these are about the same. Soybeans are June, though, so we, yeah. I think that might be the best one to go for. If we could cut the sugar beet, we'd make a lot more money out of it. A lot more money if we could cut the sugar beet. Huh. Maybe it would be worth trying to get something that we can actually cut the sugar beet with because the difference in price right there is about 50 euros per thousand liters. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but if you have 10,000, it's 500 euros. Still not a huge amount, but that, like, I mean, that does add up. What is the sugar beet choppers? I, I actually think those range in the, in the many, many thousands, so I'm not sure that it's actually worth it unless we're dealing with hundreds of thousands of litres of sugar beet, uh, which we are not. We don't have that kind of money available. Now, the other thing with our market garden, though, is that we don't have very much in the way of barley this year. Uh, we're not growing any extra barley, and we need barley for chickens, and we also need it for this up here. Now, we've got some up there. And we've also got a bit of barley in storage. So if we go over to you. And we go and have a look over this way. Take a hop, skip and a jump over here. It is just the barley that we've got left. So uh, yeah, the two. although that is actually showing in here. It's showing in our list up here. Uh, barley, 2,787 litres to keep our chickens going, which is not going to last very long. 
and so we could actually change this over now right now i got 2600 liters of sugar beet which is more than enough to cope with the amount of barley that we've got in there so we should probably turn off sugar beet there's no point in having sugar beet anymore which means oh ah that's a bit disappointing we uh, i was hoping that we had barley as one of the outgoing ones but we don't see no barley ah ah that would have been so good i mean we do have another option so i mean i could change this one over to soybeans and we could just wait six months and then sell all the soybeans that we're going to get um we get 1500 per month over six months which is six it's nine pallets of soybeans over the next six months and it's a thousand per pallet soybeans at that point will be about 1200 so that's uh nine thousand almost eleven that well it'd probably be over eleven thousand eleven thousand euros that's actually pretty good that is that is actually pretty good all right let's change that to soybeans then so what do you want at the moment you got 46 in here what, what time is it it's 10 past well if it's if the if they stay there that's fine because the other ones aren't going to so i'm gonna have that one i'll deactivate that one and then we go to soybeans and we activate that so that's gonna start making those soybeans i've got them set on spawn so the remaining 48 sugar beet will distribute and then the soybeans will just stay here and they'll spawn when they reach a thousand. That's how that's going to work. Um, what we could do in order to counteract this issue that we've got with the lack of barley coming in is I could actually go with one of these multi-crop greenhouses. The medium one here, I think, is, is our better option. I like the medium one. We, with a little tiny one right here. And then you've got a medium one here. Now, these do actually grow all the crops, he says. But looking at these, barley still doesn't seem to be an option. Got everything else, but I don't have barley on there. See? Oats, canola, wheat. It's got wheat, although it is for food. So we could grow wheat and then that barley that's in there. That'll go up for the pigs because that has to be barley. It can't be anything else. Whereas just wheat being grown, that could be put straight in for the chicken. So that would work. And if we took the 5,000 euro option, that's going to make sure that we've got plenty of food coming in. And I then need to dig this down a bit more so that I can put this one on the same level as that one over there. Now, naturally, I would actually like to have that one. But... I don't have 10 grand available for such a thing. So we're going to do it like this. So we're going to go to landscaping and we're going to go into here. I'm going to make that super strong like that. And then I'm going to just feather that down out like that for a second. And I'm going to make it a bit bigger. And then we'll turn around here so we can see what we're doing a bit better. Right, so we want to bring it up about this way. And we're going to dig right into the hillside here because I may very well be adding a bit more here. I did say I didn't want to do any more than what we already had, but I've changed my mind. Because I think this is actually a good idea. Over there. And that in like that there we go that'll work and drop that down okay i think that's pretty good there so now i will go production and you know what before i do that because these greenhouses i believe are a little bit um finicky a little bit problematic so I don't want to blend this too much, but I do want to get rid of these spiky bits right here. 
See, they're a bit sharp on the edges, so I actually want to get rid of them a little bit. So I'm just going to blend that back just a tiny bit there, and then I'm going to make that a bit bigger and blend around that little bit. Right, that's fine. And then I can go back to production greenhouses over here, and I will take the 5,000 euro greenhouse, which is this one. Uh, I want to have that way round. So I've got the water out on the same side. This is going to go here, and that is staying at 5,000. 5,000 in there. Uh, this comes out a bit, but I want this one sort of just back over on this side. Now, we may change this over to a bigger one later on, but probably not. Landscaping and painting. So I'm going to do the same, I think, as I did with the other one. So I'm going to go with this newer looking gravel option because I quite like that for something like this. It's, it, it, I think it fits. Nice little bit of gravel around there. Also, that's going to go up this side. This is where you deposit everything that you want to be putting into the greenhouse. So that's going to be graveled out there, which is what you would do. All right, if you were putting in a new thing, you'd go and put down a nice little bit of gravel all the way through and there. So that's going to look pretty good there. Uh, this on the back here, we don't actually need machine access, but naturally we're going to want to be able to walk up through there. No, we're using our greenhouses here on a regular basis, so we're going to want to be able to walk up through and, and do stuff. And if I... Right, well, I've got the water here, so... And with the pallets coming off of there this here wants to have a bit of gravel put down on it so we'll also bring that down and just take into account the other piece there so it's going to take out this whole area here like this and then as i'm quite particular about such things i would also go and just gravel out this old piece right here because well i would i just would just saying and yeah, right, that looks a lot better. I like that. So that's now ready. We can go and put water in there, and we'll be able to start getting our next bit of crop from that. But what I believe is the case with this one... Oh, as I'm here and I'm doing this, I want to build something up on that bank, and all we've got is concrete, we've got asphalt there, we've got animal mud, we've got dirt or forest ground texture. We don't have like a proper stone texture, so I'm going to just do this with a dirt texture then. Um, and that is actually going to be the bank up here like this. Come up there. I suppose I could do it with that texture. Yeah, that doesn't look right, does it? Um... I guess, actually, I could put a bit of stone in here. be nicer if we had some other options for this, but we don't, so we'll work with what we got. So we'll do this as stone, so we've dug stone. We've we, we sort of dug back into the stone a little bit. I mean, this is entirely possible. I've dug back into stone with a little one-and-a-half-ton mini digger, right? You, you can do this with really small machines. Um, depending on the type of stone. Now, obviously, it's not hard stone if you're using a little tiny mini digger like that. And it wasn't. It was just a bit of um, slate. Not even compacted that hard. But it's stony enough that it forms a fairly hard base. And it forms a, a fairly stable bank as well. I say fairly. It, it forms a nice stable bank as well, which is what you want. So then we'll go here, and we're just going to assume that this has sort of grown in a little bit. And I will put the sort of the dirt texture in. So I feel that is what would be around the base of this one. It's, it's a new-ish build. We do actually want to put a little bit of gravel down there like that, just to fill that one out. It seems right. And also, that's going to come out there, and... The gravel here on the edge would be... That's better. So this is a new-ish build. We've got some of these bits here that... Can sort of just come up there. There we go. That's better. I like that. Although it's a new-ish build, it has had time for the grass to get established. I mean, that's what we'll say, because it's not going to take long before we, we move on a season or two, and I don't want to be changing the appearance of the grass over here to sort of reflect the change in the seasons because that's just daft um 
So if I do this to start with, paint that over and that, I don't want as mud. We will do that like this. So, you know, you've got a little bit of grass that has grown in there. And then we go to plants. Uh, we'll pop in a, you know, just a few shrubs in the background here like this. Oh, okay. Let's not put any more shrubs in because these cost money. Or do they? Oh, no, they don't. That's all right. For a minute, I thought I was spending a fortune on these. I'm not. So we, we've got a few shrubs that are growing in the background here, like that. Mix them up a little bit so you, we've got a bit of variety in here, which I like. And then we want the grass and the grass here. Let's change that shape. There we go. All right, we'll put a bit of this in over here. Right, and so the grass can come here, and it'll sort of just remove a few of those shrubs. Uh, oops, no, there. A bit round the back. Right, that's, that's kind of like established ground now, so that's, that's how it's going to look for the foreseeable future. And then we've got a little bit of grass coming in over here, just to fill in these bits. I think that's going to look all right, yeah. Right, so there's the second greenhouse. All done, we've got the bits around the back. Uh, there's another bit that I want to do over here, but I'm not going to do that at the moment because I've been doing a, a little bit of this. So we want to get this next one established. Now, what you've got here is you've actually got groups. You've got grain crops, which will produce oats and sorghum and wheat. So we get this 48 times per month. Um, which means it is a bit limited on the amount of wheat that is produced. Unless we can start adding, we need to get lime for this one as well, by the way. So you seed and lime, and then also some manure going in, and that will then jump it up to 36 there instead of 18. So it does double it, uh, but we get oats and we get sorghum as well. Now our mill in here, we can grind sorghum with our mill. So we can take those two outputs over here. The oat we can send up to the mill and the sorghum we can send up to the mill. The wheat we will just spawn down here because that will go straight over to the chickens. So the oat and the sorghum can both go up to the mill and they will be able to turn to flour. So if I uh, distribute the oat and I also distribute the sorghum, the wheat will just stay here to spawn. So I'm going to have to select that one because it's the only one that we got at the moment. Activate there. And we need a bit of water. You can see everything is dried up and, and not very good. And that, I'm hoping, will at least take the edge off of us being able to feed the chickens. We've got a lovely little sort of bit there. I did say previously I didn't really want greenhouses and stuff, but... Um, well, they just make it easier, so I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. I, I, th there's no rules anywhere that I have to abide by anything I say. Um, I can chop and change as much as I like. That took all of the water. I think, actually, the water for that one is 20,000 litres. Uh, same as the other one. Yeah, it is 20,000. So we'll load this up again. And the cultivator is almost finished up there now. So we're doing really well with that one. Let's load you. At 10, I'm going to do the changeover at 10. Because I want to see what's happening with the other greenhouse. So if I drop that there. Right, we've done the changeover there. So now we've got 1 oat, 2 sorghum, 11 wheat in here. And then if we go and have... So you you got fruit and veg in here. It gives you lettuce, tomato, uh, uh, lettuce, tomato and strawberry. Uh, Carif crops is corn, uh, cotton and soybeans. Oil crops gives you canola and sunflowers. And then you got root crops, which gives you potatoes and sugar beet. So I actually... I, I do like these greenhouses. There's some nice options going on with the greenhouses there. Uh, this one right here is out of space again, so we have loaded up with the pig food. Uh, we've still got 3,000 barley in there. That's doing really well. And now we're on soybeans. So the sugar beet, 
went removed and now we've got 59 liters of 60 liters of soybeans in here and that's just going to sort of stay like that keep making those for us and yeah we've now got two lots of greenhouses producing a variety of crops and I, I like this yes you don't see as much going on with these and it's it is much smaller scale than what goes on up in the fields and but I I do like it I think it's balanced enough to make it actually work and because some things in the game they don't sort of seem particularly well balanced like your, your greenhouses there's such a seems it feels like there's a real drive towards greenhouses and greenhouses are the way to go with being able to make any money whatsoever which is why I wanted to avoid them but technically I'm not using the greenhouses to directly make money because I'm using these modded ones I'm using them to produce the food for the animals, which in turn is what is going to make us the money. I'm going to bring you down here a little bit, because it's not quite going to do a full run. And then I'll let the hired helpers finish that bit. Um, you, we can put you away in the shed. Uh, there's not a lot else I can do this month, I don't think. Once I've got that, um, those two greenhouses filled up. We've got all the food and everything that we need for the month. Um, oh, actually, you know, it's probably a really good idea if I take this one over and I actually repair it. Is he going to run out of fuel then? It sounded like he, he, he just skipped a beat just then. He really did. I don't want that. Right. Well, I've got some fuel here. I don't know how much is in the tank. And that's it. I've run out. So we've got half a tank in the combine. And I've got no fuel left on the farm. I am going to have to go and get more fuel. Well, go and get. I'm going to have to order in some more fuel soon so that we can fuel up our tractors but I've also got to repair our John Deere I can't remember how much that one's going to cost I do I just remember it being pricey right you stay there I'll lower that one down you have you've emptied out there actually I'll tell you what Let's bring him over here. And I go and tip some more water in for the pigs. Because we've been using them a little bit. And that one can go. Wait, what? Oh, maybe it's just not coming up with a the... oh yeah, it does. Right there. So we can overload a bit of water in for the pigs. And everyone should be happy. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, right, that's completely full now. Um and the worker has completed his task. Oh, we're doing we're doing well. Like we are doing well here. And I still think, you know, that the greenhouses, they do actually seem to be a really good thing for us to get. Yes, we are going to be profiting from this greenhouse that we've got just here, the, the big one, because we're growing crops that we're gonna sell, which is I you know, technically I did say I didn't want to do that, but we're the primary reason for it was so that we could grow some crops to manufacture pig food and later on we will be wanting to manufacture more pig food so there'll be less time spent with the greenhouse producing anything to go and use elsewhere so I, I'm quite happy with us sort of staying along those lines let's bring you in a little bit further so that you can actually have something done there that's better. Uh, 4,000 euros to repair that tractor. Well, that tractor can just sit there for a minute. And I want to go over to this tractor. What's the bedding he's left? He, he did, he did. He left a little tiny bit over the other end. So this field here will actually need to be planted with oilseed radish. Not yet, obviously. We don't have the cash available to go and do that just yet. Well, not, well, no, it's, it's not that we don't have the cash available. It's, it's the wrong time of year. I think it's March that we've got to wait for. Let me have a look. You. You'll see radish. March. It is indeed March. And 
Uh, we're planting oats in here, which I think is the following month, so we'll be alright with that. Let's drop you down and do the final run down here. This field is done. The other field down there is already prepared. We've just got to wait for the season to come round again so we can get planting. We've got a lot of oilseed radish to plant. And then once that's done, we need to put oats in this field, which will require the cedar. And we'll be putting corn in that field over there, which will require the planter. But there's, you know, we, we've got to cultivate and everything first. This field, it would be nice if we could plough it, but I'm not going to worry about that. What is the penalty for not ploughing? We look into the information. We go to yield boost. That's all of these. Slurry, lime, oilseed, digestate, silage, additive, herbicide. Those are all... Oh, that's icon over... Okay. Uh, Ploughing. Spelt. That's the uh, US version of spelling ploughing, by the way. In UK English, I do sometimes get called out for spelling things wrong, but I use British English and not um, US English. Um, ploughing in British English is... P-L-O-U-G-H-I-N-G. -G. So, yeah, rather than the W there. But anyway, plowing is needed. Yada, yada, yada. Wait, what? Extend a field. Stones. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't tell me what the yield is. Improving yield. Fertilizing, removing weeds, stone picking, rolling and mulching. 15% for lime. Spread fertilizer plus 23% yield bonus each time. There's nothing on here about weeders. Stone picking doesn't improve yield, I don't believe. Uh, otherwise it will damage your machine. Yes, that's a machine damaging thing, this is. Uh, rolling doesn't say... Mulching doesn't say, but I believe the ones that don't say are 5%. It's annoying that they don't say, though, but I, I think they're 5% each. Now, I don't know if ploughing is also a 5% yield bonus. Now, that's not a huge amount, but when you add that to, you know, we've got the ploughing, we've got the rolling, we've got the weeds, it, you, you know, they're, they're all 5%. That's 15% yield bonus that we're losing out now. Let's go up here and we will hose this thing off. Jump down and round and round we go. And let's clean this one off and we'll also clean off the cultivator. That one's done with for the moment. We will still need to do a little bit more with it. And get that one done as well. I've gone out of the game and I've, I've actually altered settings and, and done quite a few different things in order to... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.